who are in Islam, we believe it's like the religion where the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, the final Prophet, Khatim al Nabiin, he was like the seal of the Prophet's foot. So all prior to, so so all prior to the Prophet Muhammad, all of the prophets they called to only one God and the worship of that one God. They didn't divide that one God into different personalities or persons. They didn't say God was a spirit or a man or sticks or stones. They said that God is only God. And they didn't go beyond that, except that they were, which they were sent with. So in Islam, this is what we believe. Islam is like the final religion which comes after Judaism and Christianity. But we don't say elements of them are revelation. For example, Christianity came after its founder, which was Jesus. If Jesus were up to be on this earth and saw Christianity, he wouldn't recognize this. If Jesus came on this earth, peace and blessing be upon him, and he saw the Bible, he wouldn't really recognize what this book is. And the Bible in itself is conflicted. You know, if you, if you would, so what, what tends to happen with uh, most people, most people are lay, like me and other people, they have the Bible which is a collection of books, but they don't know how it was collected or why it was collected. The immediate assumption is that this book is inspired. But there's, a, there's over 20 or so authors writing in multiple different places who have never met, and each and every one of their, each and every one of their theologies differ. So in Mark, for example, it's the first of the four Gospels. You have Mark, Matthew, Luke, and then John. John. When you read Mark, you read it lies. he's more like a man. But by the time you've gone down to the authorship of John or in the Gospel of John, you realize Jesus has become magnanimous. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can get through to God except by me. But if he had truly said this, we would expect the earlier Gospel writers to have written this. Or some kind of tradition whether it's oral or anything. For example, something takes place here. Something takes place. The person who is present, I expect them to bear testimony to that incident. Not someone much later on in a later place. Gospel of John, yeah? Gospel of... I can't hear. Hey, what are you talking about? No, I'm just talking to you. Um, so the later the gospel is, the later the gospel is, the more magnanimous you see the personhood of Jesus. Whereas Mark it starts, and all of the scholars recognize this. You can go to the more skeptical scholars, like Bart Ehrman, you can go to N.T. Wright, Dunn. All of these scholars, conservative, conservative as well as evangelists, they recognize this uh, elevation of the uh, God, godliness or the divinity of Jesus. In the Gospel of John, for example, in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with the God, and the uh, Logos was God. This is nowhere to be seen in the rest of that very Gospel or the other preceding Gospels. Now, if Jesus or anyone had mentioned that he was a uh, Logos, you would expect. Sorry, could, I can't hear anything I'm speaking to. So, could I just. Yeah. You, if you do, just uh, let me speak, you can hear. So, um, so, so, um, you see, if, if I had made a high flying claim, let's say, assuming some Christians say Jesus is God, he came down to earth and his only mission was that you worship him and he died for your sins and he rose, etc., you'd expect him to be explicit. Now, how come all the other Gospels before Mark don't record this incident? It only takes place afterwards. We have to ask ourselves these historical why questions. Do you think, do you think, why do you think the. In recent, in recent years, Islam's expanded and Christianity's declined. Okay, so Christianity gave up many of its values. It grew up in liberalism and it allowed anything to do. Christianity used to have laws, many, many laws. And they had, a, I think, the Grecian decrees. Decorum, Grecian, is where these priests and church fathers, they would lay down laws and they'll be collated. And people will follow down these laws. But now because liberalism has grown so strong, Christianity has become mild. They've taken context uh, verses which Jesus is reportedly or purportedly offset in the gospel out of context. I'll give you a version. He says, yeah, give unto, render unto Caesar that belongs to Caesar, render unto God that belongs to God. So they said the church and the state should be separate. But this is not what Jesus ever held to. He said, the king, he wants the kingdom of uh, heaven on earth. This is the Lord's prayer. You see the coins that the Jews, and you have to understand history, the coins that the Jews used to have was stamped and sealed with the face of the emperor. The Jews were strongly against uh, idolatry. Yeah? 
which are obviously emerged later, the worshipping of man and spirits and so on. The Jews didn't accept it. They would not take the coin of Caesar. So what happened is you had to have money lenders and traders in the, in the temple. Yeah. You, you remember Jesus chased out who? The money lenders. Why did he do that? Because they were, they were dealing with the... They were dealing with coins, which for the Jews was idolatrous. So Jesus was asked about the taxes as well. And apparently, did, apparently he says, render unto Caesar that which belongs to Caesar, but everything, and render unto God which belongs to God, but all things belong to God. What do you think, what, what do you think is a core... I'm not, I'm not talking so about... So can I just finish? I'll just take one minute. Yeah, yeah? Sure. So, you know, Christianity failed in the face of secularism and reinterpreted many parts of the Bible, taking out of historical context, not knowing that Jesus came to fulfill the law, not to break it, not to introduce new things. So this is an incident where Jesus was at the temple, and you can see this, the sacrificial animals. How did you buy sacrificial animals? With money. How could you use the, 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 the temple at the time? It belonged to... Um, the Romans, not the Jews. They actually belonged to the Romans. It was made initially, the first temple period, by the Jews, but it fell into the hands of the Romans, Caesar's temple. And they used to want to buy sacrificial animals, but in order to do so, they would have to buy, buy it with uh, the coins. So when Jesus himself asked about the tax or the tithings unto Caesar, he said, unto Caesar what belongs to him and unto God what belongs to him. Now, he didn't believe that some things belong to Caesar and some things belong to God. Rather, Jesus held what Muslims believe in, that everything belongs to God. But this is why Christianity is dying, because it's born in secularism, it's continuing in secularism, and it's giving way. There are no strong values. You look at secularism, it's taking away the, the wives from the husband, the husband's wife from the wives, the children away from the parents. The government now tells and dictates to you what you can say to your parent, uh, children. You can't. If you do, they have social services on you. The children are taken, houses are broken, children are put into orphanages. Those children go to a vicious cycle of violence by people being placed into orphanages or cares or foster homes. But, this, but Christianity doesn't have the strength at the moment to say this is wrong. They're introducing LGBT, and Christianity is well known to be against LGBT, but they're just kind of giving up. They're bending, but they know this is wrong. But in order, this, because it's a new type of preaching... You, um, Are you going to address me? I'm, I'm speaking in the middle of the conversation. Yeah, listen, young, listen. Young man's it's, it's, I think he's just as old as you. Huh? I think he's just as old as you. Doesn't matter, we're both young. Both years old. Well, listen, I'm speaking to him, and you're trying to interrupt. You, you say the first time. You still should have a conversation on Yeah, I don't mind, but the thing is, if he's going to be... Look, hey, come on, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, when people are combative, remember we started off this conversation, we say, I said I'm not a debater. And what these guys tend to do is know nothing about history. They know about the Bible, and they read the only, the only thing. Ask him any questions. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can we just? I'm gonna. I say. Yeah? No, I'm gonna let him in in a few seconds. I'm gonna discuss it. No, but I'm speaking to him. No, no, no. You leave us alone. Don't stop being rude. No, no, no. Let me. Let me have my discussion. Okay. Look, look, look. This is typical. So the Christians instead. Sorry, I'm just gonna have to. Um, apologies for this. And apologies for other, any other Christians. This is the typical dawa of the Christians. Instead of talking about Christianity, they come and try to interrupt Muslims having conversations. Now, if you not, do you even look, look, let me finish my conversation. Have some courtesy. Are you okay if I speak to you and you speak to me and someone interrupts us? Answer. You're not even interacting me. I don't. I'm not interested in the debate. Listen.